Hey guys, this is Anthony Morganti from anthonymorganti.com. This is episode 19 of Learn Lightroom 6, Lightroom CC. And this is also applicable if you have Lightroom 5. That's because we're going to be talking about smart previews. Now, smart previews come in incredibly handy if you're like me and you don't keep your images on the local drive of your computer. You keep them on an external hard drive. And if you do, I'm sure you found that if you open up Lightroom and you didn't have or you don't have that hard drive plugged in, you've encountered this. If you look right now, we're in the library module of Lightroom, but you look over here on the left-hand panel, you can see under the Folders tab, this folder called Lightroom is grayed out. Furthermore, every subfolder has a question mark in the corner. In the grid view, you'll look at the images and you can see in the top right-hand corner of each image is an exclamation point. And in the film strip below, each image has an exclamation point in the top right-hand corner. That means Lightroom cannot find the file. And even over here, if you look over at the histogram, it says photo is missing. So what can you do? Well, you can't do much when you don't have the original folder uh, file available. Uh, you could do some keywords and you could, uh, you know, add some metadata like your name, address, stuff like that. But you cannot do any processing of the image. If you look at the develop module, the file could not be found and everything is grayed out over here. So what can you do? Well, one option is to create smart previews. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to plug in the hard drive that contains these files. And once that spins up, what you'll find is that miraculously, this Lightroom folder that is grayed out will become active and all the question marks disappear and all the exclamation points disappear. Now the images are available because that external drive is plugged in. And when we go to the develop module, we could actually process the image. Well, the smart previews, as I mentioned, allow you to process the image when the hard drive is not available or when that real image, the, ex the uh, actual image itself is not available. And what you could do is you could create smart previews when you import the images. So in the import dialog, as you're importing the images from your camera, you could click this box right here, Build Smart Previews. And then the previews will get created as they're being added to the catalog. If you want to do it after the fact, all you have to do is, is select the images you want to create a smart preview of. In this case, I'm not going to do all the images in this folder. There's 63. That would take a long time. So let's just do the first four. So I'm going to select the first four. And if you look, first of all, over here at the histogram below it, you could see that I have four, you, if you hover over it, it will tell you what this means. I have four original images without smart previews. I have zero originals with smart previews. I have zero smart previews, and I'm not missing any of the images or the smart previews for that matter. So we have the four selected. I want to create smart previews. You could go up to library, down to previews, and then down to build smart previews. Another way to do it, perhaps faster, is right where I showed you where these numbers are down here below the histogram. Just click on that and it comes up. Build smart previews for four photos. Yes, so we're going to build it. You can see there's a status bar in the top left hand corner and Lightroom is building the smart previews. Now, what exactly are the smart previews and where are they stored? Well, where your catalog is stored on your computer, on your local hard drive, in that folder will be a file uh, for the smart previews. And the smart previews are stored in that file. They're smaller than the original file. What specifically they are, they're lossy DNG files. So right now, in my catalog, there is a file that contains four smart previews for these images. They're lossy DNG files. They're compressed, all right, that's, you know, so they're smaller, and they're resized. They're 2,540 pixels on the long side. So what's all this mean? Well, let's say we have this image here and I want to process this image. Well, right now, of course, the hard drive is plugged in, so I can't. So let's eject this hard drive. So we're just going to eject it. 
and we'll go back to Lightroom. And you'll see we have a lot of question marks now. We have a lot of exclamation points, but on the four images that we created the smart previews for, there's no longer a question mark. We have or question point, or what is it, or exclamation point. Yeah, that's it. Uh, we don't. We no longer have that exclamation point. We have this rectangle, meaning we have a smart preview for it. So we could go over to the develop module and we could actually process this image. The processing information is stored in the catalog and when the hard drive is plugged back in, those um, edits are then uh, applied or referenced to the original image. Now, there are some good things you could do beside processing and there are some limitations. So we could process the image. That's great. What else can you do? Well, you could actually export the image. Now, when you export the image, because it's a resized image, it's 2,540 pixels on the long edge, I strongly recommend that when you export, you resize to fit and you make sure that you do not have this long edge longer than 2,540 pixels because quality will be affected. So if you're trying to, you know, have one that's like, you know, 4,800 pixels on the long edge, you're going to affect the quality of the uh, image because you're dealing with that smart preview, which has already been downsized, and then you're trying to upsize it. So be careful when you export. Uh, other things you could do is if you use any of the published services like um, Flickr, Facebook, Behance, things like that, you could do that as, uh, to those services as well. Again, though, you just want to be careful that that long edge is not longer than 2,540 pixels. You also could email the photo. So if you want to send it through email, you could go up to file, email, and email it uh, to somebody. Now, what can't you do? Well, let's pretend that these are a panorama or an HDR series of images. So I'm going to select them all. And if you right click on it and I go down to edit in, you could see you cannot merge to panorama in Photoshop, merge to HDR Pro in Photoshop. If I go down to photo merge, I can't not use Lightroom to create an HDR or a panorama. You need the original image for that. So those are some limitations uh, to the smart previews and some advantages of the smart previews. Now, let's say you're not really using them anymore and you want to reclaim some of that disk space that the smart previews are um, taking up. How do you get rid of the smart previews? Well, you could just highlight the image you want the you know to rid of the smart preview and you could go up to library, previews, discard smart previews. And when you do that, this box will come up and it's saying uh, discard the smart preview for all 63 photos. Well, not all 63 full, this folder contains 63 photos. Here, let's cancel that for a minute and I'll show you. See, this folder contains 63 photos, but not all 63 of those have smart previews. So, you know, if you want to do all of them, just do all of them. It's going to get rid of these four. Or you could just do the one. So we'll go back down to library, previews, discard smart, smart previews. And for this example, I'm just going to discard the one. So now it has the exclamation point. Now, you might have smart previews all over the place on your computer. You might have them in this folder, have three, four in that folder, six in that folder. And it might be, you know, daunting to find them. You could, of course, just go to the root folder and discard the smart previews for everything and and do it that way but maybe you want to keep some you want smart previews for you know certain images and you need you could discard them for other images how do you find them what's an easy way to find them well what i suggest you do is go to the library module of lightroom go up here to where it says catalog and click on all photographs and when you do that, what we're going to do is we're going to search for them. And up here we have this library filter. If you don't see this library filter bar when you're in the library module, just click the backslash key of your keyboard and that will make it come and go. We're going to go to the metadata tab. And here, let me get rid of it. I have it showing right here, but I'm going to discard it just to show you. Now, you might have these columns. You might not have these columns. You'll have, you know, something date, camera, lens, whatever. And you probably don't have a smart preview column. So to add it, 
What you do is go to any of these columns, and you'll see in the right-hand corner it has this little flyout menu. And if you click there, Add Column. So we added this column. It now says None. Click Next to None, and we're going to go up to Smart Preview Status. And you could see that I have three images with Smart Previews. And if I click on it, there are the three. So if you do have a lot of Smart Previews in a lot of different folders, this will show it, all, all the Smart Previews. And you could go through them and hold the Command or Control key in and click on the ones you want to get rid of. So let's say I want to keep this one and I want to get rid of the other two. So I select that first one, then I hold the Command key in and because I have a Mac. If you have a PC, it's a control, and you could click on that one. And you would keep doing that. Hold that Command or Control key in and go through all the images. Then you could go up to Library, Previews, Discard Smart Previews, and it's going to say Discard the Smart Previews for the two photos, yes. And then we only have that one left. So that's how you could find the Smart Previews that you have on your machine and discard them uh, if you don't need them anymore. And that's really smart previews in a nutshell. I hope that helps you work with smart previews and give you a little more insight of what you can and can't do with them. I'd like to thank everyone that watches my videos. I really, really do appreciate it. Thank you very, very much. That's it for this episode 19. I'll talk to you guys soon.